Mr. Dyson here, and we are ready to go on and talk now about the concept of displacement. And we are going to do it right here in displace. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, the idea in physics, displacement. So we've talked about the position of an object in a frame of reference, needing a frame of reference, like a little ruler that we put down on the world so that we can measure things, right? So we've got our ruler, our frame of reference down. We have a little object. It might be rolling this way or rolling that way. But the, uh, the ruler allows us to measure where it starts, where it finishes, and talk about its change in its position. And so we need a little bit of a nomenclature uh, what we refer to as uh, little symbols and things. That's called nomenclature. So this little triangle here comes up a lot in science. And the little triangle stands for the, the word change. If something changes, we talk about the change in an object's position, then we would use the little triangle. Remember, we use X to measure position, like where you are along the number line. So if your position changes, then your your X changes. Your, we call it delta X, the change in your position. All right, so you're going to see that little triangle coming up, so make sure you understand what that means. Displacement, it's a quick definition, is simply the change in position of an object. So position refers to where something is on a frame of reference, where it is sitting on a ruler somewhere. Um, and you want to look at how that position changes. Okay, so it describes how far you are from where you started. And it doesn't care about how you got there. Okay, so displacement is not interested in how you get from point A to point B. It doesn't care what pathway you take to get there. It's only interested in that actual um, distance from point A to point B. I want to show you a little demonstration here. So the first thing here is the idea of uh, distance. Okay, so watch the ball travel from point A to point B. Notice the pathway that it takes. Okay, the distance that it traveled is you'd have to measure this this line. You'd have to get out a ruler and measure every little bit of this line to see how long it was. That's the distance that it traveled. But this second line here, this is a measurement of the displacement. It's simply how far it is to get from point A to point B the direction of a straight line that connects point A and point B. Notice those two things would be different. Now, they're not always different. I mean, so if you if you go from point A to point B straight away, then your displacement and your distance are exactly the same. But if you decide to take a little roundabout path and go this way and that way to get to point B, then your distance is going to be different than your displacement. Okay, so displacement is a separate concept from distance. All right. Let's take a little closer look at displacement. So it can happen vertically or horizontally. We're still talking about one dimension. Here's our ruler measuring the world. Here's our little lizard, little Alfie the lizard. And he starts out here and he ends up here. And we're interested in how did his position change. So we need a few little symbols here like XI. XI stands for Alfie's initial position. I for initial. That means where you start out. And then F stands for final, which is, of course, where you finish up. So Alfie finishes up here. Uh, we, we could just say well, right around his middle. Right? His middle finishes up right around 85. Alfie's little middle was here right around 20 at the beginning. So, you know, how far did Alfie move? Well, we're going to have the 85 minus the 20, and it's going to tell us that Alfie moved 65 centimeters. What about if Alfie's climbing up a tree? All right, well, again... We usually use the letter Y for the up and down direction, just like on a Y axis on a graph. Uh, so again, we have to have Y final, little y f there, and Y initial. So we have to mark off where Alfie starts to climb the tree and where Alfie finishes climbing the tree. All right, so then again, we can figure out Alfie's displacement. So let's take an example here using a graph. If you were to drive 60 miles from Pennsylvania to New Jersey, probably to save money on gas, you would represent that in this way. Okay, here you are starting. We start yourself at the origin of the graph, 
and you drive 60 miles. We'll count each one of these as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 miles. Now, notice here, please, they've used X0 because, again, different books use things differently. So X0 is another way of saying X initial. These are the same. They are used interchangeably, either XI for X initial or X zero for X initial. Both mean the same thing. All right, so you drive 60 miles from Pennsylvania to New Jersey, then you drive 20 miles back toward Pennsylvania. So the green arrow, here you are when you finished going 60 miles into Jersey. Now you turn around and come back 20 miles. Okay, so what happened? You have traveled a distance of 80 miles. You went 60 miles into Jersey, red arrow, came 20 miles back. So if you look at your car's speedometer, your, or your car's uh, odometer is gonna read uh, 80 miles that you traveled. That's your distance, but it is not your displacement. Because when you think about your displacement, you have to think about where did I start, X zero, and where did I finish, XF. And that is all that displacement's interested in. Does not care how much running around you do, getting from the first point to the second point. It only cares about how far is it from the first point to the second point. And you can see if you finish up here at XF and you started here at X0, you have a displacement of 40. Now, there's a formula we can use and that we do use for displacement. And that formula is here. So delta X, the change in your position, is a short way of writing the word displacement. That's what we mean when we see delta x. So displacement is equal to your final position minus your initial position. Then you read them right off the graph. What's the final position here? 40. What's the initial position? Zero. 40 minus zero. That's how I would figure out the displacement. Notice that it's a positive number. That's important because in displacement, we care about what direction you go. With distance, we don't. You moved 40, positive 40. In other words, you moved to the right. Remember from our frame of reference lesson that going to the right is positive. You moved 40 to the right. That's positive 40. If you started here at XF, if this was your X0, and you ended up here at the beginning at the origin, and that was your final position, well, then if you follow the formula, your final position would be 0 minus your initial position, which is 40, and your displacement would be negative 40. So negative 40 would mean that you had gone 40 units to the left. So in displacement, direction is important. Okay, so that's what I just said. Measurements of distance can only be positive values. Distance is different than displacement. You can't have a negative distance but you can have a negative displacement. So, as I said, if you start here and go here, you start at X0 and go to XF, your displacement is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So we're starting at 30 and we're ending at 50. Your displacement is 50 minus 30, which equals 20. But over here, where we start X0, we start at 30, and we finish up here at 10. Well, now displacement is 10 minus 30, which is negative 20. In other words, we moved 20 spaces in the negative direction, 20 spaces to the left. Here, our displacement was 20 spaces to the right. All right, so a little quick quiz. How far your ending point is from your starting point is known as what? And the answer is B, that's displacement, right? Not distance. A car travels 60 meters to the right and then 30 meters to the left. What distance has the car traveled? Okay, so make this distinction between distance and displacement. All right, so for traveling 60 meters to the right, let's start here. Let's go 60 meters. One, two, three, four, five, six. 60 meters to the right, that way. Two, three, four, five. Did I get one, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry. Six. 60 meters to the right. And then we're going to turn around and go 30 meters to the left. 
So here we are going backwards now 10, 20, 30 meters. Okay, so there's where we ended up. Now, we're talking about distance. So we first traveled 60, and then we traveled 30. When you think about distance, think about what's your car's um, mileage meter going to say. Your car only cares about how far it moves. So your mileage meter is going to say 60 plus 30 equals 90. That's your distance that you've traveled. Now, same situation now, but now what's the displacement? So again, if we start here, make this our x0, and we move to the right, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60 meters to the right, and then 30 meters to the left. So here we are going backwards, 10, 20, 30. All right, so in displacement, we are interested in where we started and where we finished. X0, XF, and that's all we care about. And the formula says that our displacement equals where you finish minus where you start. So in this case, we finished at 30. We had started at zero. So our displacement was 30 meters. And it's positive. From the place where we started to the place where we ended, we moved 30 meters to the right. Okay, you try this. So if you start from the origin, okay, so we're talking about origin, they mean the zero point on a number line, right? The zero on a number line is called the origin, and you travel four kilometers east, and then seven kilometers west. So east is to the right, you're gonna to go to the right by four, and then you're gonna turn around, and you're gonna to go to the left, because west is to the left. You're gonna to go to the left by seven, all the way back down here, seven. Think about what's going to happen now. Where are you when you finish? If you go four to the right and you finish at seven to the left, you have going to travel a total distance of 11 meters. Because again, you're only interested in adding up all the things that you do when you calculate distance. This is not displacement. Distance cares about exactly how far you go. But displacement, let's take the same idea now, Starting from the origin, travel four kilometers east and then seven kilometers west. What's your net displacement from your original point? So again, if you think about displacement, you're only interested in where you start versus where you finish. Okay, so uh, in this case, we're going to have our origin. We'll start here and we'll travel four kilometers east. That way, right, that'll be four. Oops. Eee. And then we're going to do seven kilometers to the west. So if we turn around now and head seven this way, we go back to four and three more. So where do we end up really? We'll end up here at negative three. If you think about your number line, okay, because this, this arrow is seven. All right, so we, um, to find our net displacement, we want delta x equals our initial position, which was, uh, sorry, our final position, which was negative three minus our initial position, which was zero. We started here, we finished here, so it's xf minus x initial, so it's negative three minus zero, which equals negative three. Where are we when we finish versus where are we when we started? We are three spaces negative, three spaces to the left, or in this instance, they're calling that the west. All right, think about this one. You run around a 400 meter track, and at the end of your run, what's the distance you traveled? Well, distance. If you run 400 meters, you covered a distance of 400 meters. So you run around the track for 400 meters, you come back to where you started, but you have to, to measure distance. You have to take all of the uh, distance that you traveled, which is 400 meters, and that's your total distance. But think about displacement. So if you start here and you run around a circular track and you come back to where you finished, the definition of displacement is where you started minus where you finished. Uh, pardon me, that's backwards. Where you finished minus where you started. Well, they're the same place. You finished and started in the same spot. So no matter how you think about position, they're the same thing. And when you take things and subtract them that are the same, what do you get? 
you get zero. So whenever you finish in the same place you started, your displacement is zero. Okay, so that's the concept of displacement, and um, I hope you understood it and you have uh, a good place to put it.